Hello and uh, welcome to this uh, first lecture in systems thinking where we're going to give you a quick overview of uh, what system thinking is uh, and how it can be used, right? So let's start with looking at uh, the first part. So in this uh, section, we will give you an overview of the systems thinking and in this particular lecture, we will talk about what is this system thinking, right? Systems thinking have different uh, interpretations, different views. So what is the one view that we know that we should uh, talk to you about? So let's look at what is system thinking. So system thinking is an approach, is a methodology, a technique to solve problems and analyze situations. So analyzing situations, solving problems, and you could say along with that making decisions. Uh, that views uh, systems as interconnected wholes, so big complex things that has many parts uh, and they're interconnected. Uh, so that's where it views and solves uh, these problems. Now where these are the places where all these uh, interconnected holes where each part influences the behavior of the whole. They are dynamic. And the system thinking emphasizes understanding the relationship between the parts of the system, the various components as we call them, rather than analyzing them in isolation. This is a holistic thinking as you will see this being talked about as we go forward. So in this uh, system thinking is about connecting the dots, you know. So it's about analyzing all of them uh, in totality rather than in isolation. So what are the key aspects of system thinking? So what, and uh, later on we will look at how it can be used, but first let's look at what are the various uh, facets or aspects of system thinking. So first thing is that system thinking is in a holistic perspective, right? It considers the entire system. Uh, the entire system that includes the components that work together, interactions that are key and the environment in which it operate and the environment which influences the working and it, it is about exploring this complex interplay of these components interactions and external environment for an optimal operation so instead of focusing solely on the individual elements it looks at how these elements interact and influence each other and as a result of that, uh, create the situation that exists today, like in traffic conditions we will talk about. Or otherwise, uh, they make uh, life good for you, as happens in a lot of uh, uh, good economies like India at this point of time working well. The second part of the systems is uh, thinking is that it recognizes that the things are interconnected. Changes in one part of the system can have cascading effects. Cascading effect, as you see here on the screen, that affects throughout the system. So one part, one movement, one act, uh, uh, change in a system in one part can affect the whole system. And uh, in this system thinking, it is important to understand these interconnections for predicting outcomes and designing effective interventions. Because one part can affect can cascade through the entire system. So you need to figure out what are the implications of uh, uh, making a change in a component and how will it impact the whole business because things are interconnected. The third part of uh, the facet of systems thinking is that it involves feedback loops. Uh, the outputs of the systems go back, circle back to influence its origin, its inputs. Uh, that's what is called feedback loops. Now these feedbacks loop can be reinforcing a positive feedback that you see here where a, uh, a suckling of an infant triggers the milk flow and it uh, 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 the, the child suckles more and the more it suckles more the milk flow. So that's a positive loop about it. The second is a balancing feedback in which uh, uh, that leads the system behavior that can amplify or stabilize over a period of time. Here in this example that you see body temperature control is one wonderful thing. If the body temperature increases, the cooling process gets activated and the temperature reduces. 
if the body temperature decreases, the heating uh, process, the shivering process gets activated and body temperature increases. So this, uh, this uh, uh, you know, uh, negative or balancing feedback process of the body is a wonderful example of a feedback loop that stabilizes the system. The fourth thing about system thinking is that it acknowledges that systems can exhibit what is called emergent properties. Emergent property meaning properties that arise from the interactions of systems component but cannot be explained by examining these components in isolation. So this is what is called, you know, uh, 1 plus 1 equal to 3. So individually these components won't do anything but when, when they work together they produce a result that is not expected. So emergent properties often result from the complexity of interaction within the system and life, how it emerges from the part in a eukaryote uh, uh, cell is a wonderful example. There are individual parts of the body in terms of cells and these individual parts are arranged into a structure inside the cell and these uh, bring uh, things to life, things bring human bank, beings or uh, living beings into life. The, the fourth, fifth thing if I remember right is the dynamic behavior. Systems are dynamic and they evolve period of time. They are not static. They, they develop over period of time. And system thinking involves analyzing how these things, how system changes and adapts in response to internal and external influences such as feedback loops, external disturbances or policy intervention. So that's what, so they are dynamic in nature. And uh, another last thing probably is to know that system thinking encourages considering multiple perspectives. Same thing can be seen from different views. And, uh, and it, they have multiple stakeholders when analyzing a system. Different stakeholders may have different goals, values or mental models of the system, how they see the system works, which can influence how they perceive and interact with it. So different stakeholders have different goals, values and models in the system and that can affect how they interact with it. So there are multiple perspectives of the system. So what do we do next? Having looked at what are, what are the facets or what are the aspects of system thinking? Let's take a look at example. Let's consider a classic example from an urban planning traffic congestion in a city. So applying system thinking to this issue involves analyzing the problem in terms of the interconnected components, interactions and feedback loops and the environment within the transportation system. So thank you so much for watching this first uh, lecture on overview in this uh, where we are giving an overview in this course Master in Systems Thinking. I hope you're beginning to learn new things, beginning to enjoy and I do look forward to seeing you again in the next lecture. Please feel free to message me if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer your question and download the PDF file to take a look at some of the examples that I've shown you here.